I want to say it was in the late 1990s when it came to me while walking through the radio hallways that creativity is an addiction. And the reason why it came to me that way was I couldn't figure out why I was never going home. I was always in the production studio creating, 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 creating. It's an addiction. Unplug because we will always say yes to creativity, totally uncut because we all make mistakes. So turn it into a tool. This is Arrow Unplugged. Wow. And just like that, another holiday is in the history books. Labor Day usually marks the end of the summer, or at least it does here in the United States. I don't know what it's like in other countries, but it serves as a mile marker. Fall time represents what in your life? It's more than Halloween and falling leaves. The season represents the birth of change, being grateful for the fruits that came from your field, to prepare for your harvest for the winter months that actually could be bare. But did you leave enough for the soil to have so it can be replenished for another summer? little deep, isn't it? Mm. We tie our seasons together by ways of celebrating holidays. And before we know it, we're going to be right there smack dab in the middle of our yearly triple crown, which is Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. And by the time that we get there, well, you know, the NFL, it should be ready to go. We should know who's going to be in the top three or the top five, who's going to be going to the Super Bowl. And we all know the Super Bowl is where the world goes to eat, cheer, and armchair quarterback. And just like that, another holiday is in the history books. Hey, it's Arrow. This is the Daily Mess, a chronological walk through an everyday world. I am a daily writer. First of all, I cannot believe that today's date is September 6th, 2022. And you can't help but sit there and think that, wow, time is moving so quickly. And yet no government on this planet has shortened the day, shortened the months. They've done nothing. It's just we are moving at a speed that they didn't teach us in high school and or at some sort of university. But here we are. And I think one of the things that I love most about being a daily writer is that here we are can be something that we once did, but because I daily wrote and I jotted little things down, I can always go back to it, not to live in the past, but maybe to pick something up that I was sending out to the future reader. This is The Daily Mess. Those moments when you wish you had a page, something to keep for yourself, not to suddenly throw it out there into the digital universe for others to judge and or think that they know you. Missing from our lives. Now, this is coming from my heart, all right? And hopefully it'll plant something in your heart. Missing from our lives is the mystique of one's personality. Getting to know somebody through conversation that always really kind of deepens the length of the friendship. I personally do not know who I would be today if I had social media as a teenager. Because in my day, we were still passing notes. Oh, yeah, those notes, thoughts on a page. Sometimes somebody would spray some perfume on it. Those were the notes, and we would just savor those notes. I don't get that feeling from emails and text messages. I talk with so many authors whose number one aim on their present day journey is to keep real books in people's hands. Musicians are pretty much doing the same. I mean, they're selling CDs and albums. This streaming thing is just something that they do. But they would rather sell the CDs, the albums, and still be on terrestrial radio. I personally can't make the leap to the digital notebook. The texture of a page would never be the same, especially on those days when a giant wet sneeze put slobber all over these words. Yeah. Those moments when you wish you had a page, something to keep for yourself. Or as of late, I've really picked up on this, this journey, and I kind of touched on it a few seconds ago, that maybe this isn't for us when we put something on a page, that what it's really for is a future reader. There, there's, there's a new show. It's called Dark. It's on, it's on Netflix. I think it started on the CW. What I love about this is that I know that the creators of this show had to have sat down with giant yellow notebooks and put things in order. Because it's so integral. It takes the human imagination to a level of thought where you actually go, is this possible? And when you add that human element to a lot of the stories that we write and or just plant out there for a future reader, you sit there and you think, it is possible. Because I've been a daily writer since July of 1994, that means that, yeah, I daily wrote through September 11th, 2001. I know the emotions that I went through only because I've gone back to read and to re-experience 
the moments of that particular day in history. The recession of 2008. I wrote through it. I worked it out. I figured things out so that it wouldn't bring harm to me and other businesses because I was the production director of a huge major broadcasting corporation and my clients were so important to me that it's all played out. Dear future reader, when you read this, learn something from that particular recession because it's helped me in this place where we presently stand in the United States where they're going, are we in a recession? Are we not in a recession? You know, everything is high, the price of gas, everything like that. But yet it's the tools that I planted on the pages that really have served as the great teacher. Go ahead, find yourself a page. Leave the future reader a note. And when you get there, trust me, you're going to be grateful. I'm Arrow, and that's The Daily Mess.